Hi, I'm Jeremy Thake. I'm here with Abram Jackson today. Thanks for joining me, mate. Absolutely. Thank you. In this video, we're going to talk about Microsoft Graph Data Connect. So Abram, as the PM on this, why should we care about Data Connect? You know, we're finding a lot of developers that they are getting more interested and in, uh, trying to do more in the realm of insights and intelligence and analytics. These sorts of applications that require a lot of data from a lot of users. And it's pretty difficult to get that when you're calling on behalf of one user with a few records at a time. You end up having to make thousands or tens of thousands of, of calls to the Microsoft Graph. Right. So what we're doing is making it so much simpler to be able to call and get data for many users for a lot of history up to millions or billions of records so that you can use them to train your ML models or to build analytics apps. And so I can imagine there's lots of different scenarios you want to do this in. Like I immediately think of like pulling it out to bring it into other systems to use that data. But what are the typical scenarios you're seeing customers use this for? You know, we see a lot of developers that uh, they begin with developing a relationship map. So uh, okay. because an employee's communications, right, they're in Outlook or they're in Teams, right, or the other M365 products, they, they can build this understanding of who's talking to who. And then you can do really interesting things from that, just from that data alone, on understanding the hidden organization chart, understanding where the silos are, uh, finding out if your sales team is talking to your engineering team, or who, or what okay. teams are doing this really well. And, and outside of the relationships, what other ones do you seem to see coming along? Well, it gets really interesting when you start thinking about the, the content of what's going on in your email systems or in your other systems, right? A lot of, uh, just about all of the knowledge workers or information workers, their input and their output comes through their emails and their documents that they read or they write. Mm -hmm. But most of that value is unstructured in the body of those documents. Yep. Now, if with the advent of democratized AI in Azure and how easy it is to get started with machine learning, especially through services like Azure Cognitive Services, it is increasingly available to take the unstructured content of that uh, and start getting some topics and some understanding from there. Now, with that, right, there's a lot of things that you can do around uh, understanding what topics employees are working on or what their projects right. are. And then you can see like if their projects are completing on time. Or you can combine that with the relationship map in information to understand, hey, uh, if I'm an employee and I'm working and I need to learn about Azure Cognitive Services, mm -hmm. right, maybe I can call us a search, right, that a developer builds and find out which people in my organization that I'm connected to are also really familiar with Azure Cognitive Services. So I've built projects in the past where I've done like semantic analysis on an email, but it's an individual email in, a, in an add-in where I'm clicking a button. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the scenario would be I could have webhooks to all my mail and triggering webhooks to read semantic analysis of all those that content. But I feel like with Data Connect, that allows me to like schedule up a a move into Azure of those mail and I can run semantic analysis in one big batch across all those mail in that way. Like, so there's lots of benefits of kind of like doing this and looking at things through a different lens. Absolutely, right? And when you're looking at this at scale, in addition to just uh, understanding how your business processes are happening, right? If you're also looking at the sentiment of all these communications, you can understand how people feel about these business processes. Right. I, another really another interesting scenario that I love that combines with Azure Bot Framework is taking your help desk support mm -hmm. uh, and training a machine learning model to uh, to uh, have that bot right. And so now you can improve your tier one or add a bot into your website that leverages a lot of the previous answers your help desk has given. Oh, that's really smart. I didn't even consider that. So okay, with all this and moving all that data in like bulk of millions and millions of records. There, I'm sure the developers are kind of triggering on this seems like it could be a security concern or a privacy concern. So I imagine you've got controls around Data Connect in terms of who can see this data and what levels and kind of gates you have that administrators have to check to make that work. Absolutely. Uh, that's even been a, a bigger challenge than even the scale up system that we use behind the scenes, which is itself a real technical challenge. When you're talking about this much data from this many users, uh, there are a lot of privacy concerns to be aware of and to control for. So foundational to Microsoft Graph Data Connect is that every data movement is explicitly consented by the customer's, Azure, or the customer's administrator, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, they, get, they are making a specific decision, right? And they can revoke that decision later. 
Okay. And this is notification based. We've got a web portal through Office 365 privileged access management to make this really easy. So we start with consent. However, uh, we need a lot more than that. You as a developer get to uh, have a lot of granularity and minimize exactly which data that you want to use for your application, mm -hmm. right? So you can choose specific data sets, like only sent items, sent email items, for example. And, but even within that, you can choose specific columns, right? So if you don't need the body of the email, you don't have to request the email. You also, as a developer, get to choose which group of users you're going to consent for, right? So we have a subgroup, and you don't have to get data for the entire organization. All of this information is given to the customer admin, right? So they see in the web portal exactly which data is being requested, which columns of that data, who is requesting it, where it is going, which users are being requested, and then the administrator gets to optionally filter out more sensitive users. And so if, if I send an email to an executive, right, uh, that data might not be included, even if my email is included in the data pipeline, right. because the administrator be has, like has filtered out the executive. Clearance by related to security reasons, could be all sorts of things. Absolutely. There's uh, lots of things to uh, keep in mind uh, when you're talking about this. So, so as a graph developer, essentially, where maybe the scopes that we allow for permissions, for instance, it would make sense that Data Connect is a better scenario if you've got more concerns around not just asking for a group read, write, all or mail.readall across everybody's mailboxes with an app only access to the API. You could use this Data Connect approach to get that data into Azure um, and have the admins bless you there with that very fine granular consent. So Absolutely. Seems like a great scenario. So, what's the best way to show this? Yeah, well, I'd like to uh, show you uh, through Azure Data Factory the interface into using Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Awesome. So let's go over here to the browser where I've navigated to Azure Data Factory in the Azure portal. So here I'm looking at one of the pipelines that I've already created. And a pipeline is just an orchestration of a set of activities. Uh, it's sort of uh, the extract, transform, load pattern. So this is a copy data activity. And you can drag and drop right, on, right onto this pipeline uh, management. You see here that I have as a source uh, this data set. And this data set is connected to my Office 365 subscription, and I've selected one of the tables. Uh, so th these tables correspond to the Microsoft Graph entities. And so what do we support right now in terms of those entities? So the entities right now are the, uh, the Outlook kinds of entities, the mail APIs, as well as the Active Directory user information. So I can get it like mail, calendar, contacts, and That's then right. Active Directory organizational type information. That's right. That's awesome. So I've already added a group on here, right? So this is a, a uh, Microsoft group, uh, the flight crew members. And um, if I go over here to the schema, Here's where I'm selecting these columns, right? So I've already removed a lot of these columns. Uh, you see that this is a pretty small subset of the user object, but I can, of course, just uh, delete another one. If I go back to the pipeline, Azure Data Factory allows you to uh, connect this to lots of other activities. If you're not familiar with Data Factory, it's a really nice tool. So in this case, I'm taking the user information from Active Directory in bulk for thousands of users, and I'm transforming them into the, the schema that I want to use uh, for my Azure application. Now, if I submit this right now, and I'll look at one that I've already submitted. So here I've got a different user. So this is a this is my admin user, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was in Data Factory, I was the developer user, uh, but we don't want uh, somebody to be able to approve their own requests. So we have a, a two-person authentication process here. So if I look at one of these requests from the Office 365 Privileged Access Management portal, you see the user that is doing the request. You see um, the in this case, this one was already approved. So we see who has approved it. Uh, I didn't have a filter out group here, but this is where that would be. The data table that's exactly requested. Uh, in this case, uh, this was submitted for all of the users in the organization. Where the data is going, exactly which columns are being selected. And uh, if this was a new request, I could approve or deny it right here. Uh, but also, of course, at any time, uh, the administrator can revoke any of the existing approvals. Okay, and so when you approve it, that essentially allows that pipeline to be enabled 
Um, and how frequently can that pipeline run, for instance? If I, do I take a cut every 24 hours of those users, or what's the frequency there? We see that daily is a pretty common pattern. Yeah. This is a batch system, well designed for you know, millions or billions of records. Yeah. Uh, and so you should expect each pipeline to have some amount of overhead so we can skin up our, spin up our sk scale up system. Mm -hmm. uh, so you wouldn't want to run this any more than maybe two hours or four hours or something like that. Right. And you can run this in the background so that you can train your machine learning model daily or weekly, uh, or to provide a daily dashboard or something like that. I guess with users, like there will be changes there, but the subset will be, you know, Microsoft is 140,000 odd people. But um, if you had this pulling in everybody's calendar um, and there's 140,000 calendars, that's going to be a lot of data across the pipe. So, Absolutely. Um, there's definitely considerations there in terms of how far you scale and, and being granular with what you're asking for. That's right. Awesome. That's really good. Thanks very much, Abel. Thank you, Jeremy. Awesome. So to get started, graph.microsoft.com, click on Docs at the top, and on the left-hand side, there's a data access page which will show you how to get started with Data Connect today. Thanks for watching.